Let's get a more detailed picture now of how the weather's been affecting this region. Suffolk saw some of the heaviest snowfall overnight, especially around the coast. Alex Dunlop is in Ipswich now. Alex. Well, Susie, as you say, the heaviest of the snowfall is still falling in the east part of the county. This is the village of Buckley uh, in the eastern part of Suffolk. Now, in the last hour, a huge snow shower has descended on Felixstowe, Woodbridge and Ipswich. And that's meant, of course, a nightmare for commuters trying to get out of the east of Ipswich onto the A14. Uh, around 260 of the county's schools closed today. And in rural areas, it's uh, been a pretty grim time for farmers, especially sugar beet farmers. Uh, at this farm, the beet has quite literally frozen in the ground. So when they try to lift it, some of it snaps off and up to a third of this crop has been ruined by frost. The top third of this beet, as you can see, is dark brown. That's where the frost has penetrated the beet, thus only leaving the lovely white heart of the beet um, to be delivered acceptably to the factory. All this on top is in effect um, had it, really. Well, another difficult day for the Port of Felixstowe. Uh, they've temporarily lifted Operation Stack, but they're saying to drivers, hauliers, just drop off containers. They can't pick up uh, any containers. Uh, if you're going to a wedding tomorrow, then uh, good luck. One couple I spoke to uh, near Bury St. Edmunds say that they'll tell their 40, 140 guests that if they need to, they'll uh, put them up overnight. Well, there's been a real build-up of snow in Essex, and as you can see, it's falling again. We're on the and that's it from uh, Suffolk. Back to you. Alex, thank you very much. Well, next it's to Essex. We saw a bit of Kevin Birch there. Let's hear more from Kevin Birch. He sent us this short report a short time ago. Well, there's been a real build-up of snow in Essex, and as you can see, it's falling again. We're on the main route between Colchester and Harwich. While we've been here already, there's been some near misses. Now, down the road in Harwich, real congestion there. Some areas virtually cut off across the county today. 350 schools have been closed. Now, it's hassle all round. For one family from Essex, this cold snap has left them with a lot more work to do. This is the Animal Rescue Centre at Mistley. 25 acres and 2,000 creatures, and the feeding frenzy is about to begin. Some of the animals have been victims of neglect or cruelty, and many are getting on in years, so need extra care to keep warm. I mean, I've got chickens over 10 years old. I've got pigs past their sell-by date, geese over 25. I've got a, a donkey here, which is 40 years old. They do live slightly longer than a horse, but they're still getting on. The cold means the animals, including pigs, Pinky and Perky, and Punk the Skunk, eat twice as much, and some can get frisky very quickly. Oh, Oi, stop that. It all adds up to no rest for the team as far as they're concerned. An end to the cold snap can't come soon enough. Well, I think for Mike, the animals and everyone else here in Essex, a lot more of this to endear, of course, for the very latest. Keep tuned to BBC Essex. Finally, for the picture in Norfolk tonight, Andrew Sinclair is in Norwich. Yes, Susie, it's getting very cold here tonight, and actually in many parts of the region at the moment, there's freezing fog, which is causing big problems on the road. Bus services are being cancelled tonight here in Norwich and also in Great Yarmouth, and I'm told that visibility is very bad on the A11 and the A140 at the moment, which is leading to very slow journeys home. 368 schools were closed in the county today. That's a few less than yesterday, and it meant that once again thousands of children got the chance to enjoy the snow, often in fairly imaginative ways, and already their warnings that some of those schools may be closed on Monday. The weather's also affecting bin collections in Norfolk. Councils are working hard to keep to their published timetables, but the runs are taking much longer than usual. It's really hard slow. We've been on here for a couple of hours. Started at half six this morning. But people are grateful, are they? Yeah, people come out and say thanks and that to us. I'm very grateful. There are concerns about grit here in Norfolk, but there should be enough to get us through the weekend. Finally tonight, let me leave you with some fairly amazing pictures which have been sent today from Look East viewer Mike Page, which he took from his aircraft as he flew over East Norfolk. Quite spectacular. And let me also finish by saying that BBC Radio Norfolk will be on air throughout the weekend and, of course, on Monday morning with all the latest news about how the county is being affected. Andrew, thank you very much. Other news now in an offshore wind farm which could generate five times as much electricity as sizable nuclear power station moved a step closer today. Developers were appointed for a huge new area off the North Sea where hundreds of new turbines could be built.
Off Great Yarmouth today, the region's first offshore wind farm was making a much-needed contribution to our energy supplies. But it's a minnow compared with what is now planned. This is where consent has already been granted to build wind farms. But today, developers were appointed for this area. With hundreds of turbines, it could power five million homes. It will create tremendous opportunities for employment for people during the development, construction and the long-term operation of uh, the wind farm. But could local industry cope? Our largest offshore engineering firm is currently in administration. At the present time, most of the turbines are manufactured in Europe. Where we're going to have the opportunity, though, is really in the operations and maintenance and being able to help with the construction. The new wind farm is a boost to plans to develop an energy cluster around Yarmouth and Lowestoft. There is an industry rule of thumb that about one job is created per turbine. And we're anticipating, in this case, about 1,000 direct jobs and probably an additional 4,000 in terms of the supply chain. It will be at least five years before construction begins offshore. Richard Bond, BBC Look East, Yarmouth. A man from Essex has been given an indeterminate jail sentence for selling child sex pictures over the internet. 43-year-old Mark Longman from Chelmsford also groomed and sexually abused teenage girls. Essex police are warning internet paedophiles that their activities leave a digital footprint. Norwich City manager Paul Lambert says he's not interested in the job at Premier League club Burnley. Lambert is the bookies' favourite to take over at Turf Moor, but he says he hasn't been approached, and even if he is approached, he won't be leaving Norwich. All you need to know is I'm not going anywhere. That's, that's, I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying here. I just feel it's, it's right for, for me to, to stay here. I don't, I don't want to go anywhere. The Formula One racing driver Heike Kovalainen has been in Norfolk today. The Finnish driver has been trying his seat for size at the Lotus F1 racing headquarters in Hingham. This is a mock-up of the car he'll be driving then when the season gets underway in Bahrain in March. Well, Lotus F1 says it's a week ahead of schedule. Well, you're watching...